Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about projects, new projects and how to get up to speed with the new project. So let's get into it. Now this is actually one of those rare situations where a senior and a junior will face pretty much the same challenges. Now of course, as you would expect, a senior will probably solve this in a slightly quicker fashion than a junior, but this problem is still there for, for every programmer who starts a new job or gets into a new project or something of that nature. When you first sit down at that code and you start being asked basically to start to implement different features, you don't really know where everything is. And this is actually what I argue is the main difference between knowing the syntax of a language and knowing a language. A lot of people will argue, and I, I absolutely hate, I never let anybody tell you that you, a good programmer should be able to work in absolutely everything, it shouldn't matter. Yes, it is true that a super senior programmer can learn any language in a fairly short amount of time if there are enough similarities between the different languages. This is true, but you actually, guys, if you, are on, if you are on language number three plus as a programmer, this usually happens between one to three years of experience, that type of level. The syntax doesn't matter anymore for the most part. There are going to be some weirdness in the language, but for the most part, it's going to be the same. Then everything else is about learning where everything is, not only in the project, but in the language itself, how you do things in, in that language. So when it comes to learning a new project, this is very much the same sort of issue where you will find that even if your boss told you, or even if you ask the question, so okay, what architecture are you using? And what practices do you use? They can tell you, oh yeah, we do MVC with a service oriented architecture, or we do functional program. They can use any term they want. Trust me when I say their definition, the project owners or the the people you are working for their definition of that practice is going to be their own flavor of that thing it's the same thing we see these days with scrum and agile programming or agile work processes not that damn person can tell me what scrum actually is or look me in the eye and say that hey we're doing scrum every single co company does it their own way that you just borrow certain ideas and practices and that usually is the way how things go. Guys, it's very rare that someone is like a purist that abides purely about what the def by the definition of, of a practice or a term or anything like that. What usually happens is that people take the, they are introduced to a concept and then they take the pieces that they like about that concept and make it their own and slap basically the same label on it. That's usually how it goes, and not just for programming, in all aspects of society. So, with that said, how do you as a programmer, a new programmer at your project, get up to speed? Well, I can only say, I can, I'll tell you how I do this, how I, as quickly as possible, get to a point where I understand all the parts. Now, this is highly individual, of course, and I'll just give you my process. So, when I f sit down at my project, I have nothing on my computer. The first thing I do at a new job is to, of course, set up my workstation exactly the way I want it. I usually, I actually have my, all, all my configuration files and all these things that I have. You kind of learn this after you've set up a few work in, workstations. Is, then this is a good idea, guys. Version control your own setup. In other words, if you use an IDE or something like that, save the configuration file in a GitHub account or something like that. Say, if you use Vim, use your, put your Vim RC file in a version control system so that when you want to set things up, you can just download the file or the repository with all your configurations and then you're up to speed. So you don't have to redefine everything. I mean, I have tons of snippets for my JavaScript so, and I don't want to have to redeclare all of those. So that's number one. Number two is, of course, that you download the workstation dependencies such as, well, Docker, your text editor, and, or your IDE, if you use something like that, and databases and all that good stuff, depending on your situation, right? 
And once that's done, you clone the repository, you get the code down on your computer. Now, that, this is the first thing that you need to figure out. All right, how do you build the project? How do you start the project? And in order to answer that question, you're going to have to talk to your manager. The first thing that you need to know about your project, apart from, of course, which language it uses, is how do you actually run the system? In other words, what build system are you using? Let's say that you're a Java, it's a Java shop, all right? Are you using Maven? Or are you using Gradle? Are you using something else? That sort of thing, Ant maybe. And you need to, if it's, say in javascript are you use, using uh, you then you're using node which makes it fairly standard but some some of the projects out there with different technologies will have a few deviations as to how you're going to run things so me and scala for example we use sbt for our su stuff so that's the first thing you need to know just how do you start the thing the second thing you need to know is what if you have such things as databases, for example. What database do you need? In other words, do you need to set something up in your environment to run the project? And that's something you just ask your colleagues about and they are going to give you that information immediately. So, let's, that's said and done. With that information given to you, you are now up and running. So, the second thing I do when I have the project actually running on my system is that I look for my dependency file. So that for, say, a Node.js project, I will go to my package.json file immediately. And I will start looking through all the libraries. And usually there are quite a few libraries. And you don't have to learn all of the libraries. It's absolutely pointless. But what you're looking for are the big ones, the things that make the biggest impact on your code base. These are usually, if you're making a web application, you need to know which web framework that you are using. It is very important that you know that because that's not a su single little isolated library that you just use here and there. That's something that cascades through the whole application. It sets the tone for your entire development process. So those, what I call the big dependencies, database interfaces, so these ORMs, uh, MVC, prad, MVC frameworks, this, all of that stuff. These are important things. Serializer, serializers, such as say Jackson for, for Java, these type of things. You need to know these. And what you then, when, once you have those, you start researching them if you don't know them already. And if there's something there that you don't really, you're not really all that familiar with and you have a question or two about, ask your colleagues. Just ask them what these libraries are and just take it from there because you need to know the big dependencies. All right, said and done. You've done all of it. Now you're ready to spin up the server and actually start going to the application. And this is where you start having a look at just playing around with the application a little bit, getting the basics. And the way that I like to do this is that I like to go to the main feature page. What do I mean by main feature page? Well, I mean that every single application that you ever use is going to have a main concept, a selling point of some sort, something it does better than anything else. This most used page that there is on the system. Usually this is uh, one of the things that you are going to be shown as part of when you are introduced to the project. Go and look, uh, look at that page. Open up the network tab and see what network requests are being made to what URLs. Copy paste those URLs, go to the entry points of the system. It, when you are, if ever in doubt, guys, if you are ever unsure how a program executes, always start at the entry point. In other words, always start at the route level and work your way down. Every single system that you ever, you're going to work with has an entry point, a place where the program starts. It's very easy for you because especially, it's very tricky rather to understand how everything fits together. If you're in, in the middle of some very nested function or you have some, a really long tree of different methods that are being executed as part of 
some operation. So it's very hard to go into the middle of an execution, but it's very easy to start at the top and just work your way down. That's usually what I do. So what I do, as I said, I look at the network request and I start moving through all of the code that starts at the top and just kind of walking through. So I can kind of get an understanding of what type of architecture am I dealing with here? Is it service oriented? Are they putting everything in the controller? What objects are there? The data structures, the models, all of this stuff that you can learn from just walking through from the entry point down to the database. Because if you go, that, that's everything in between. It all, every single execute, every single call to the system starts at the entry point, and usually it ends at the database, and then it's the response. It's back to the, to the client that made the request, right? So that's how I usually start. And this last thing I always do is I start when I have that understanding of okay these are let's say that you do a service oriented architecture where you have a bunch of services. What I do after I've understood how the main features work and what models I'm working with is that I go into the directories where one of the big services usually that's the user service. For example, that's a very, very, I know for a fact that every single system is going to have some way of dealing with users, which means that if I look at that code, that's going to be most likely the most update, up to date, well, or much, most touched area of the code because you are constantly changing things about products and users and so forth. It's not so likely that I will find the freshest code in, say, the emailing service. This is just my way of thinking. And so I go to that directory where all that code lives and I look at that as a case study. What do I mean by a case study? What I mean is that what your goal as a new programmer in a new project is, is to fit in. Don't try to change all the practices. Learn the practices first. Just look at how that file and all the stuff that is around it, how that service or how that piece of code is structured. That way you can learn, okay, how am I supposed to write, you know, when you're starting to add your new, your new feature, what is the expected way of, for you to build it? Is it in a directory with all the associated files? Is it, does you, do you have a, one directory for the logic and one for a test and all that stuff? The, all these questions you can answer by just looking at other people's examples in the code base. So use those as a reference to check if you're on the right path when you are adding your own features. And always, 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 always ask questions, always put up code reviews so that you have a learning experience and a dialogue going with your, with your colleagues. And usually with this approach, it takes in a big project, I would say on average, I'm up to speed and pretty much productive on the same level as my colleagues within between three to six months. That's usually how long it takes to get to a point where you can actually produce at basically the same rate. Uh, for a junior profile who's still kind of learning programming, it can take up to a year. But this is, uh, th this is fairly standard, I would say, at least from my experiences. And I hope this helps you out. Have a great day.